I think this is the uh, fifth meeting uh, to the uh, uh, Open Planner Autoware Working Group. Welcome everyone. Uh, the agenda for today will be uh, uh, simple. We have, uh, I don't know if uh, uh, Dr. Tampet student will, will, will uh, present today or not. Uh, I will. Yes, Mahir is here. And okay. actually, officially, he's not my student. Uh, he's supervised by like co-worker of ours, mm -hmm. uh, Navid Muhammad. Uh, mm -hmm. And he's, Mahir is doing PhD on uh, behavior prediction. Or, mm -hmm. And uh, he's been playing a little bit on Open Planner, but uh, I think he would deserve some uh, feedback on some approaches he chose and whether these are like the good way to approach things in op Open Planner. Okay, okay so, great. So we have uh, Mahir uh, a presentation or talk and uh, also we want to discuss with uh, Armin. He has a, one discussion item. Um, and then we can check the updates for from the uh, development of uh, Open Planner 1.15. Okay, uh, let's start with uh, Mahir. You can yeah. let me enable if you would like to share presentation or something. Yeah, yeah. So can you see my screen? Okay. Can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. Uh, so, hello everyone. Uh, today I will be presenting some uh, of the experiments, like initial experiments we did, uh, just uh, to get the, the Open Planner's uh, prediction functionality in use for the Ego vehicle. Um, so uh, I will first start with the agenda. Uh, the first part over here is the what the default prediction functionality in Open Planner. So I will be dis discussing the motion prediction uh, and the trajectory evaluation nodes and the problems which I based uh, during, the, uh, during the motion prediction and trajectory evaluation uh, and making them in use for the real vehicle. Uh, can you see that there is a internet connection instability over here? We, we can hear you fine now. Okay. Uh, and in the next, I will present the, the work, uh, a small node which I created, uh, which is basically trajectory which basically forecasts the trajectory uh, safety boxes along the trajectory. And uh, uh, I will also discuss the problems uh, which we are still facing right now. So some text over here. Uh, so open, open, open Planner's uh, prediction functionality is a consistent pipeline with detected object array messages. Uh, this is the message type. So starting from the Open Planner motion predictor node, uh, that takes in the detection object uh, topic, uh, which is also a type of detected object array. These messages can be generated by a clustering node. Uh, if you have a clustering motor that, that uh, detects the objects, uh, or it can be another model that gives that populates the detected object array messages. Mm -hmm. And uh, afterwards, the open planners motion predictor node applies a particle filter uh, over those uh, detected objects and simulates the forward motion of those detected objects. Mm -hmm. So once it's done, you get the predicted object topic as an output from the predictor node, uh, which is also a type of detected object array. And uh, these detected object array messages have uh, candidate trajectories inside them, uh, which, is being, which are being mm -hmm. populated by the motion predictor node. Mm -hmm. So uh, the next step here is the trajectory evaluation node. Uh, this 
Subject evaluator node is for the ego vehicle. Uh, okay, by the way, I will be using the term target vehicle for a vehicle for which we intend to predict a trajectory and mm -hmm. ego vehicle for the vehicle which we want to, uh, which is the like autonomous vehicle. So the trajectory evaluator node takes in those predicted object, uh, detected object array messages and it evaluates that if there is any of this detected object uh, is intercepting the planned trajectory of the EK vehicle in future. And if it does, uh, it blocks the lanes for the ego vehicle. Mm -hmm. So there are parameters inside the evaluator node that you can tweak. For example, you can uh, uh, increase the number of uh, safety distance, horizontal safety distance, vertical safety distance uh, before you actually stop, before the ego vehicle actually stops uh, at the interception point. So going forward. So there is the parameter inside the trajectory evaluator node, uh, which is enable prediction. Uh, you can toggle it inside the openfanner.yaml file. Uh, by default, it's false uh, for, for us right now. Uh, and what does it do when it's false? So, Can you see the video? Yes. So this is a simulation uh, setup. Uh, we have a roundabout scenario. Uh, I have a swerving enabled for the ego vehicle. By the way, this uh, uh, long rectangle over here is mm. the ego vehicle. Mm. And the small box is the simulated vehicle. Uh, what you see over here is, sorry. what you see over here is that uh, the enable prediction is disabled. Uh, we have predicted trajectories and the lanes are only or are blocked only when the the footprint of the target vehicle has intercepted the trajectory of the mm -hmm. so this is the this is when the enable prediction is set to false for inside the trajectory evaluator node okay moving forward so what happens when you set this parameter true uh, what we understand that this setting this parameter true will uh, take into account the future trajectory of the target vehicle and block the lane before the actual footprint has reached the interception point uh, mm -hmm. of the planned trajectory. So this can be seen over here. We are already seeing some of the lane mark. By the way, can you actually see the the lanes clearly? Can, can I just... Yeah, looking good. Yeah, I can, I can see. You can see the rollouts clearly. Mm -hmm. So uh, we see the uh, rollouts over here. These the colors change as soon as the trajectory uh, intercepts the planned trajectory of the echo vehicle. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is what is supposed to be happen. What's supposed to happen after you set this parameter true? Mm -hmm. So what are the problems with this uh, right now? what actually we saw and we faced. Uh, so the first thing is that there is no visual feedback that uh, when the vehicle will actually stop, the ego vehicle, where it will actually stop. So we just see the changing of colors of the lanes, uh, the, the rollouts, uh, but there is uh, no definitive point which we see that, okay, the ego vehicle will stop over here before it intercepts the target vehicle or its trajectory. Uh, okay, uh, because is this is, the... uh, let me, let me, uh, like, uh, comment, like, uh, fast answer, so I don't forget. Uh, this actually, the, the, it will switch the ego vehicle state to follow, and it will start to slow down to stop before, like, to zero, or to the target velocity, which is the intersection point. Uh, has the difference velocity between the ego vehicle and this intersection point. So it will try to reach this. It is it either it's zero or smaller velocity, but that slowing down depends on the controller. So you can add a, a, a line, a red line at that point, uh, similar to the new Otwear architecture or, or um, Apollo. Um, so, so it's just a visual, uh, as you said, visual feedback, 
But if you if you notice that the state changes to uh, follow and yes. target velocity changes, then you can create your own using those those values. You can create your own uh, stopping point. So what I saw is that uh, in the next slide, I will show you the video that mm -hmm. uh, even though you have uh, like maybe you can set the behavior to follow and it's already happening in, when we are uh, playing around with the bags and everything. But the, but, but the vehicle's footprint, most of the time, in, uh, collides with the target vehicle's footprint. Uh, it doesn't stop at the right moment. Hmm. Okay. So, if you have example, show me, and we can. We yeah. Can so okay. the these are the problems. So one of the one of them is the visual feedback. Uh, next, it's the overlapping of the vehicle which, uh, safety boxes with the trajectory, uh, with the safety boxes of the target vehicle. And the last one, the last point is the that the vehicle doesn't stop at the right moment. At least for uh, us, it's at least. I, I think so uh, Matthias, Matthias had a yeah. question. Um, yeah, just um, to add to the not stopping at the right position, it's like Hartem said, you're switching to the follow mode, and I've experienced the same thing for the follow mode, and that's why I have some changes for the follow mode. Um, which um, we can discuss um, hard time about uh, merging them into the software. And also in addition to that, um, you, the question is, do you want to have a follow mode in the situation or do you want to yield to the other vehicle? Because basically what you want, you have a stop line, you want to yield. So it's basically, you need a different behavior and this is the behavior we've introduced to Open Planner as well. Just to, a side note on that. So uh, the way I understood it, that uh, some situations can use follow mode and some situation in which uh, the vehicle, there are like, for example, aggressive drivers and uh, there is no way that you follow the aggressive behavior. You just try to stop before any other vehicle has uh, passed you like in the future. So for example, over here, uh, let, let me just show this video, which shows one of this problem. Uh, so the, the velocity or the speed of the vehicle is uh, already quite, uh, the, the vehicle is already quite fast, the target vehicle. Uh, I don't know, can you see it, Henry? Uh, can Hello. you play the video slower? Hello? Yes. We can hear you. Oh, wait. Can you play, like, uh, play slower motion? Uh. Can you still hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. But the video is just um, stuttering a little bit. So as you can see over here that the, uh, our Echo vehicle should have stopped earlier. We already uh, see that there is, this is a roundabout scenario and the vehicle should uh, like, uh, stop and give way for the round uh, for the vehicle which is uh, taking the roundabout. Okay, can uh, you can you go back to the, the intersection right point here. just before we the... saw that the lanes got blocked? Mm, yeah, but okay, now go back. Though actually, the, it wasn't blocked. If you go back, uh, go back a little bit, like in the before before the collision, just before the collision, and stop the video. Yes, here. Okay, okay, stop. Back. Can you pause pause the video? Just pause the video and, and, and uh, go back. Uh, actually, uh, yes. your voice is One. a bit lagging behind uh, for me. Okay. Uh, so. um, back a little bit more. Back. Uh, one more step. Okay. Uh, you can see here um, until this moment it, it only 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 uh, blocked one trajectory and yes. it didn't block the rest of the like the very uh, it, it looks like a bus you are using a very yes. big safety margin yes. so so uh, at this moment it, it blocked one trajectory but there is one trajectory on the right which is not uh which is not blocked yes so it should go right or but there is no enough time to do that action 
because the response of the controller is not that fast. It's fast enough and you don't have uh, a steering wheel. The, the solution is to, to, to look forward more because this is going faster. So you can, uh, you can add this one parameter to, to increase the effect of velocity, which will predict longer. If, if the, this yellow uh, dot, the, the predicted trajectory is longer, uh, that there will be time for the vehicle to respond to that. It's like when you are seeing uh, this when cannot you, be necessary. No, sorry, I uh, can continue. Uh, it is like when you you will you will start reacting. So if you want to react earlier, then you should this this uh, the prediction should be longer, or the effect of the velocity because this is thirty three kilometer per hour, and this is maybe only um, 30 uh, or 30 meters yeah you should you should um, like predict a bit uh, further in the future but uh, can, can it be the case every time that even if for example in this case uh, we notice that there is a vehicle in the roundabout uh, we already um, started moving from uh, we, we didn't know know it before. For example, here there is a stopping point over here. Uh, can you see the mouse? Yes. Yes. Uh, so, if, you... uh, if our vehicle, the Ego vehicle, has already moved ahead of here, and there is another vehicle doing a roundabout, and for example, in this case, uh, the target the target vehicle's trajectory hasn't reached the vehicle right now. So. Uh, would we just always increase the velocity of the or increase the trajectory of the target vehicle? Is it the right solution? Uh, it is. It is one solution. I'm not saying that this is the right solution. There is another solution Matthias uh, uh, proposed, which is uh, using the yield. He developed a new yield behavior, so he can actually. He, I think he wants. Go ahead, Matthias. Yeah, um, I just want to add to Hartem's suggestion to increase the prediction time. I think right now you're using something like two seconds. Um, yes. I've had the same experience, um, maybe increase it to six seconds and then your prediction will intersect with the rollouts and then your ego vehicle will know that the path is blocked and go into the follow mode. And in this case, it will try to follow the vehicle which is coming up but uh, this will have another problem because basically you don't want to follow this vehicle because it's behind it's, you. Yeah, it's from behind you. Yeah, and then you need the new yield state. So you want to stop for another vehicle. Yes. So basically what you need um, to do this um, scenario, you need this new yield state. Okay. Uh, one more question for this is that uh, sometimes because this uh, prediction functionality is dependent on the map, uh, like you get only those trajectories which are uh, the, the trajectories are being shown on the lanes which are existing on the map. So the trajectories are not in, independent of the lanes, right? So sometimes uh, there is like a lane change uh, within like the, a straight road and uh, the vehicle, you, when you have like, for example, more trajectories, when you put the parameter in the open planner predictor node that, okay, generate more than one tra trajectory for the target vehicle. So mm -hmm. sometimes when there is, uh, we, we know that the vehicle will go straight, but there is an extension of the trajectory coming out into another uh, like lane on the map and it's not right. Uh, I don't know uh, if I'm able you to- You mean enable branching? Sure. No, 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 not enable branching. I'm saying that uh, for, let, let, let me just play this video then maybe you can understand it here. Uh, so for example, here, there are two lanes. First, this lane from this, this vehicle is coming from, mm -hmm. and then there is another lane over here, uh, which is being uh, followed by the Yago vehicle. Mm -hmm. So as soon as this vehicle goes into the other lane, uh, you get the, 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 uh, the trajectory moves to the other lane. The prediction okay. trajectory moves to the other mm -hmm. lane. So if you have more than one trajectory, so you get uh, enabled from the open planner predictor, open planners uh, motion predictor node, then you get two trajectories, one over here, one over here. Uh, okay. 
so this so it it just try uh the, the, the this to try to uh uh make it safer uh, to expect that if if this vehicle will change lane this it it should be uh considered in the ego vehicle motion so that's what i'm uh, i wanted to ask that uh, consider a straight road and there is a lane change marker uh in on a straight road but uh, the vehicles uh sometimes change lane abruptly and sometimes they don't change lane at the at the marker which is being presented in the map for example uh, i don't know if i'm able to see, explain the situation but maybe i can show you in the demonstration mm. later on yeah uh, in this case if you have uh, this is the, the the one missing part in this in the open planner um in in the case of this is only just see the you don't you are not using particle filter now right Yes. You are only using the, the, the extracted trajectory. This mm -hmm. is like a greedy uh, solution to this problem. Yes. Uh, you're covering all possible uh, situation. But in, in the case of using the particle filter, it should estimate and give a probability for each uh, extracted trajectory. Mm -hmm. uh, and, these, and these probabilities should be uh, used in the planner as the uh, the cost uh, or the reward if you're using mdp or you're using whatever optimization algorithm uh, to uh, to calculate the intersection or the uh, collision point okay uh, so this is the next step the currently the particle filter yes output these kind of expected state uh, estimated state and uh, probability assigned with each state and with each uh, trajectory you need to sort and get the maximum even if, if, like you can you can delete the small ones uh, uh, small probabilities or you get the maximum or you you hit the threshold um, this is depends on your solution and how you how you train your data and um, but it's a missing link between the prediction the particle filter based prediction and the planning part so uh, i have two questions for this uh, would it be in the new uh, like the latest updates for the open planner would it be like this that uh, you will always have the map dependent trajectories or would it be at some point we have independent trajectories uh, map independent trajectories will will still there uh, because it solves some of the, the prediction problem. It's difficult to predict independent of the map, like only using only the motion of the vehicle. So uh, the, the, the map extracted trajectories are the base. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, and, but then we add a layer of, of estimation to the motion. Like we take the, the motion also, if you have vision, you can add the, uh, the traffic, uh, the, sorry, the indicators, the blinkers, right and left for the vehicle to, to also uh, estimate whether it will go right or left if there is a branching uh, in the road. Um, so uh, currently I'm, I'm working on the, on the MDP solution, but it will take some time. Um, the, the idea is to, to use MDP to uh, evaluate the, 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 the collision point or the trajectory and also MDP can uh, calculate the optimal policy. In this case will be the velocity uh, of the ego vehicle going to this uh, collision point. So uh, this, this will solve both problems. Uh, find the collision point and find the uh, velocity profile uh, going to which uh, of, the, of the available uh, trajectories. Uh, so this is what I'm working on now, but it will take some time. So if you have another solution, if you can provide uh, your own, that would be great. And it would be like a, a, a big contribution and uh, connecting them, uh, the, the missing link between the prediction and the planning. Okay. So um, small side note from my side, you could also change the association distance for the tracked object. You know that parameter? Uh, I don't know if it's called association distance, but there's a distance you can set up, I guess. 
if I have it right in mind, um, how how close a detected object must be to a um, lane on the map in order to have the prediction on the track. Okay. Mm. This is the closest closest center line to to include. Uh, okay. Okay. So I also okay. have a one question for Matthias. Maybe before we go on, I wanted to just clarify uh, why the the yield state is necessary and the follow state is not going to cut it. So when the the predicted trajectory of the other vehicle is intersecting our ego, ego vehicle trajectory, then the ve ego vehicle trajectory will be blocked. And uh, in a follow state, it will stop. Uh, so it will stop also in a follow state, uh, what, what the um, yield state yeah. uh, will give us here. Yeah. Um, can we move to the, in the video just um, a little bit further on? Um, um, is it the same one? Yeah, the, the video where just move it a little bit. Uh, did this video, right? This the video collision. was a good example. Where, where the collision happened, I guess. Okay, that's the one. That's a good way to describe it. And stop here, please. Yeah, that's that's fine. Um, so if we say oops. our oops, I'm no worries. Sorry. sorry. <laughs> No worries. And yeah, that's fine here. You can stop here. OK. Um, right now, let's say the predicted um, points in the future interfere with our all of our rollout. So we don't, all our trajectories are blocked. And then we would use the follow mode. And follow mode would tell us um, to follow the vehicle the closest vehicle. And the closest vehicle would be the one left to us. And if I calculate the follow distance right now to this vehicle, which is on our left, um, then the whole calculation is not correct anymore because we're not considering a follow mode. It's, it's a different behavior we want. Does that answer your question? But uh, why does it uh, calculate the distance to the vehicle on the left? Shouldn't it calculate distance to the blocking point? Yeah. to the point where where the trajectories that, intersect. Yeah, um, that could be a solution. But right now, Hatim, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the follow mode, that's not the case. It's not what's happening. Um, no, I think it, it's, it's, it's to the collision point. OK, then um, I have to check. But the last thing I saw was that um, it was, at least in the section I was looking at, um, the object behind, or just the closest object. Uh, it is, um, uh, uh, as far as I remember, it is to the collision point. Uh, but to, to, to comment on this, uh, to answer uh, Dr. Tampet, uh, the, the, the yielding behavior is need to differentiate between two different situations. Uh, because in the yielding behavior, we have this almost like stopping point, and uh, sometimes we do this for pedestrian, so they don't have trajectory. So uh, we we search for area, and it doesn't have to be collision uh, trajectory uh, to our trajectory. Um, so so the, the the yielding behavior will provide this kind of of solution if we don't have this uh, collision uh, point. Um, uh, okay, you mean like when you are stopping before the pedestrian crossing because yes. the pedestrian is waiting there? Yeah. Okay, there I can understand. There is no collision point. There is no blocking of, of the path. But in this particular case, it seems to me that if we accept the blocking point or the collision point where the two trajectories intersect, that what might happen is that, uh, let's say our vehicle stops, I don't know, five or 10 meters before that collision point, mm. that, but that might not be still good enough because uh, if this uh, other trajectory merges into our trajectory at a very narrow angle, we might sp still be like on the way for the other vehicle on the left. It, yes, and 
I, I, I understand um, um, what you are saying. We, we could predict more in the future uh, to prevent this from happening. But uh, one, uh, one case, if we are in intersection and the other vehicles are stopping too or very slow, in this case, the predicted trajectory will be short. So it will not be in a collision course with us, but they have the right of way. Then we, we, if, if we move now in this case to the yield state, then we wait for them to take action. Uh, so because sometimes if they are stop or they are very slow, uh, then the, the trajectory will not collide and we will always, the, the open planner ego vehicle will always move forward. To me, it would Can make I sense know? that uh, our, the, the, the length of the predicted trajectory is somehow dependent on the speed. And, uh, and if this vehicle comes fast, the, the predicted trajectory is long, uh, then it's going to uh, block our way earlier. And if the vehicle is coming slowly, yes. then the predicted tra trajectory is uh, shorter. And then um, we have we can maybe go earlier and maybe go in front of that other vehicle instead of waiting for it. So uh, it seems to me that uh, just waiting without actually having a blockage on our path, that seems a little bit that makes sense in the context of pedestrian crossing, but in the uh, normal yielding <clears throat> scenario, I, I'm uh, not exactly sure. Uh, I, I actually, we discussed this and, and, and uh, with other other uh, teams uh, in in the U.S. and even in some places in Japan. Some some intersections they are uh, uncontrolled, like there is no priority. So. And going first is considered impolite. So having this kind of nice, I, I, I always think about yielding behavior is the nice behavior. I know we are not, sometimes we are not breaking any rules if we calculate the time right, even for pedestrian here, if, if we have time to cross before the pedestrian comes to the way, uh, it's still legally okay. But it is nice to, to wait for the pedestrian coming from maybe two, three meters to cross the road. And uh, this is how I think about the yielding uh, behavior. Yes, but what I maybe wanted to point out that uh, this is maybe the scenario where the motivation for my here's work uh, comes from. So uh, the exact same scenario, let's say if the the trajectory of the other vehicle is intersecting with our uh, trajectory. We have a point uh, where it uh, blocks our path and then we uh, go into follow mode and we stop before that point. But this car on the left is com coming at so narrow angle that it's still colliding with us mm. when it co continues with its own trajectory. And that's why uh, Mahir implemented this uh, uh, safety box uh, propagation approach that he's going to talk about right now. Okay. Okay. It might yeah, be a good solution. Thing. Okay. Thanks Understood. for this, Tambit. Uh, yeah, I was. Uh, I wanted to explain the same thing, but Tambit already explained it in a very better manner than me. Yeah, so, sure. You could continue, Mahir. Yeah. So this is the problem that I was talking about. That uh, we already knew that the trajectory has already intercepted at some point, but uh, even if we set some uh, threshold value that the vehicle should stop some distance before, but we don't know that distance actually. That distance should be derived by the safety box of the target vehicle uh, in the future. Mm. So, okay. Uh, so, trajectory without safety, safety boxes right now, as I talked, it's the same pipeline. You get the OP motion predicted node, predicted objects, and that goes to the OP trajectory evaluator. Uh, but with the safety boxes, you have a node uh, that takes in those predicted objects. Uh, uh, these predicted objects have candidate trajectories. So what I do over here is that I extract those candidate trajectory points and I forecast or forecast the footprint of the actual vehicle over mm -hmm. those trajectory points. And then I create the detected object and populate the detected object array messages, which are being understand uh, by, we are being understood by the planner. And these footprints are considered as like uh, not 
like you can consider them as artificial, artificial uh, detected objects along the trajectory of the vehicle, uh, mm -hmm. the target vehicle. Mm -hmm. So this is being uh, this is the output of the trajectory safety forecaster node, and then this is subscribed by the OP trajectory evaluator for the Echo vehicle. So what it looks like uh, is this over here. can ignore the, the just breaking mm -hmm. and going into the lane, but that can be controlled. Uh, you can set the, some value that uh, stop before the collision point, but you understand the concept over here. Yeah, yes. So this is what uh, the trajectory safety boxes uh, did. Uh, it stopped the vehicle at the right moment uh, using the footprint of the detected vehicle. Mm -hmm. And what, what is maybe a nice thing about this is that uh, it basically the object detection uh, functionality has not changed. We just uh, kind of clone the same object along the trajectory uh, and the rest of the collision detection uh, functionality basically stays exactly the same. It's, it's like we have multiple fake vehicles uh, mm. on the way uh, and I'm not sure how it affects the, the performance of the collision detection, mm. but uh, conceptually it's very simple. Yeah, I, I understand. Actually, it's the very it's a it's a nice elegant solution. So you don't change the internal of the of the object the, of the object detection. Uh, one, uh, if you have multiple objects, multiple cars, and with multiple trajectories. Uh, they will affect the performance. Uh, but one solution is if we stop the video in the middle, once the, okay, so can you stop now? Uh, you are sampling at each waypoint, right? Yes. And it's it's like maybe 30, uh, uh, half meter between 50, 50 centimeter between each two waypoints. You can just sample uh, with the length of the vehicle. So you don't have to sample uh, to, to, to add this object at each waypoint. In this yes. case, you will actually uh, improve the performance a lot. Oh, wait, C can you reiterate that? Uh, do you mean that uh, we just uh, take the length of the target vehicle and we just uh, clone it uh, ahead yes. until the last trajectory point? At each, at, like you skip waypoints until uh, with the length of the, of the target vehicle. Okay. So now, instead of 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 every waypoint, like every uh, fifty centimeters, maybe every uh, two meters, you have one box. So every four waypoints, you have one box. Okay. Okay. Yeah, that, this, that's that's fine. This will improve the performance a lot. Uh, there is another. Uh, do Do you know what? Actually, I I want to explain why exactly this happens. Um, the the um, that predicted trajectory, the yellow points, when it uh, it checked the collision with the with the original trajectory, it check uh, it tests for the uh, uh, target vehicle width. Okay, so it actually this kind of box it's already taken into consideration, but with only the trajectory, and because you are coming with angle, this doesn't happen soon enough. And if these points collide with the safety box, come inside, actually, actually this, this is the, 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 the bug comes here. If it's come inside the safety box, mm -hmm. it will stop. So even if it's not colliding with the trajectory, but any of these yellow uh, predicted uh, waypoints come inside the safety box of the ego vehicle, then it will go to follow mode. So yes. that the bug here, actually, I call it, can call it a bug or the, the error, is this shouldn't be only uh, the point inside the box. It should be box, uh, box uh, intersecting with the box. Yes. So 
I can I, I, I can look at fast fix on it or I can point you where to fix it, then uh, you can you can do it inside so you don't have to do additional uh, work or the performance affect. So this is another solution. If this works with you, keep it working, but we can also work on uh, the, the integrated solution with the already, uh, with the current uh, trajectory evaluator. This is supposed to be like some initial basic solution, which I thought that could work because we already know that the safety boxes uh mm. like the vehicle stops at the right moment for the safety box so this could be used for the so i thought that this could be used for the trajectory as well yeah yeah it, it was a missing a missing uh and actually performance wise they will be the same i i will add another calculation for the box inside so it's almost almost the same performance wise so so can you uh reiterate the the box the, the concept of the point inside the box so there are multiple points over here e or e there are already existing boxes along those trajectories uh, uh trajectory points uh, the, um you can actually imagine that when the in the trajectory evaluator there is already a box that like similar you what you did for each waypoint mm -hmm. there is already a box with the size the width and the length it's a virtual box uh for each waypoint but that box intersects only with the uh, ego vehicle trajectory. Okay. So if, if you can see, if you go a bit back and at the intersection of a bit forward, a bit more, more. Okay, here, you see it already the left trajectory, uh, the left roll out for the ego vehicle become red. Yes. So be, before this point become closer, but actually the distance between the, the, the point, the yellow point and the trajectory is, um, is, is uh, the width is actually the width of the, both the width of the- um, Target vehicle. You know, of the ego vehicle and the target vehicle. If okay. I understand it correctly, the way it works right now is that if the safety box of the ego vehicle, uh, if the point from the predicted trajectory is inside of the yes. safety box of the yes. uh, ego vehicle, then it stops. Mm -hmm. Also, when the point from the ego vehicle trajectory is within the safety box of the, the other vehicle, mm -hmm. then it also stops. Yes. But, but what it doesn't consider is uh, the intersection of two safety boxes. Uh, yes, and, yes. And uh, that's what uh, Mahir added here, but it, he added it in a, in a different way and not into the normal way how you do it in the trajectory evaluator. And mm -hmm. it, in some ways it's simpler because it doesn't duplicate this collision functionality in yeah. multiple places. But uh, yeah, it's, it's not the way how it was, it was done in yeah, uh, the only only before. only thing only only my, my consider co yeah, concern is uh, I wanna add, we we wanna add this to the open planner and it, for users of open planner they will have to start another node mm -hmm. and missing this node will will cause a problem and they will complain it's not working as you are showing so uh, this is it's it's just a, a implementation uh, consideration. But it works fine then, yeah. It's a nice solution. It, it, it works fine for the simulation. Uh, I can show you the problems I had as well for the bags. Okay, you, you can continue go into that, Before <laughs> we go into that, I wanted to ask Mahir, uh, uh, we see that those safety boxes of the other vehicle, these are staying a little bit behind. Is This is a visualization issue or I is there some kind of lag? visualization issue because uh, the, the marker uh, the, the the point markers of the trajectory they stay for some time probably and then they disappear so there's it's like a lifetime for the marker and they should have dis been disappeared but they stay there for some time uh, correct me if I'm wrong Hayden. maybe yeah yeah it's a it's an issue uh, for the I always have issue for the visualization 
uh, because I, I wanted to save time and performance. So it doesn't visualize it, it, every iteration. It's an RVS problem, it, RVS issue. But it seems that your safety boxes are a little bit behind, not the predicted points. You were yeah, yeah it, the, it depends on the message. Yeah, I, I mean those uh, green Wait boxes. Uh, are you asking the about the target safety field. box? Oh. Safety boxes, the yeah, uh, I, I... propagated, forecasted uh, safety boxes. These seem a little bit behind from the trajectory points. Indeed, they are. We see. Uh, Sorry? Yes. Uh, go ahead, sorry. Yeah, we see those uh, safety boxes. Uh, they are a little bit behind, and uh, the very first safety box is not. Uh, it's, it's exactly at the first trajectory point, not ahead of it. Or maybe maybe that's just how it's calculated. Maybe it's that's normal. Uh, I maybe don't it's think normal. it's it's normal. I think it should have. It should be started from the first uh, point, like the actual uh, footprint of the vehicle, and then extend towards the last uh, point. Okay. Probably it's due to the Deep lag. Ahead of, but what? Where this lag lag is coming from? Is the forecaster uh, node or? A... I am not sure <laughs> if it's the forecaster node or. or... I think it's the forecaster node, but there are not too many messages in the forecaster node, but uh, that's what I wanted to talk that there, that sometimes the trajectory uh, points are changed, but the marker stays there. And uh, this is probably the obvious thing that we get the visual illusion that the points have moved ahead or the points are behind and uh, we get something else as an output. Yeah. Uh, this uh, is the performance thing that- This is different, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I agree there is a problem with the visualization, but um, um, it's not like it's just late messages or uh, it, it stopped visualizing for some frames. Mm -hmm. uh, there is, if you check in the uh, motion, uh, uh, estimation motion prediction node, We'll find there is a timer for visualization, so mm -hmm. it's not it's not each, every frame, and every frame I try to use uh, from previous uh, message because when I when I clean and add the message every time it slow down the system. If your computer is not um, powerful enough, this visualization will will slow everything. Will slow auto wear. So mm -hmm. you can disable that if you have a like a powerful computer, disable this timer and uh, you will find the messages uh, um, uh, propagated, like sent to the RVs each iteration. Uh, yes, but, but I think Tambit is pointing out two issues over here. The one is the, uh, the, the trajectory itself, which uh, the problem which you already explained, Hatim. And the other one is that the boxes which I have over here are lagging behind the actual trajectory. Yes, it's a two, two different, two two different, different problems. Issues. Yes. So yeah, this is probably the forecaster note that mm -hmm. uh, has to be tweaked okay. well. So, okay. so please yeah, I can con move. continue the, your presentation. Okay. So that's uh, okay. almost the end probably of the presentation. Mm -hmm. So what we have over here is that uh, there is another problem uh, for which I have another video, which is in the next slide, but let me just uh, list out the problems that we lack right now. Uh, the first thing is the instability of trajectories. It's perfect in simulation because there is, you have the, the detected object is there and it's going to stay there. There is no like uh, uh, perception lag that you miss some object at, at some point and then at the same time, at, at, after some frames, you get the object again. Uh, so you have this problem of instability, like the trajectories come uh, and then go uh, within no time uh, mm. in the bags. Then you have this uh, sudden vehicle uh, stopping behavior, which I have right now, it's aggressive. Uh, you don't just stop at the, uh, at the moment that there is, if there is a, so the, the safety boxes are essentially just, uh, Artificially, de artificial detected objects. And uh, this is not the right solution, I would say, that you just stop at the very end, last moment, once you have a collision with the safety box 
Oh, okay. Again, if you look ahead, you should uh, 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 like. It depends on your controller also your uh, yeah. deceleration value. So yeah, yeah. If we could so, we could we could change this. Yeah, th th this is the controller problem. Uh, this is not the uh, the aggressive. Uh, this is this can be tweaked by the controller. What what I did in the the Carla testing with Carla, I I set like uh, the car to look further, and the controller a bit. Uh, like the the deceleration three meter per second square, uh, something like that, or uh, two point five. I don't remember exactly two point five meter per second square. Uh, so uh, it's it's a trade off, and sometimes if you if you don't have uh, the the perception, uh, the the limitation of the perception. You see the vehicle, the object is detected from Euclidean cluster so soon that your um, deceleration is not enough. So you will have to, to, to hit the brake to the maximum to do that at the last moment. And sometimes mm -hmm. in, in Carla, it doesn't, even if I brake, it doesn't brake uh, on time. Uh, so, um, it's kind of the, the, the noise they add in the controller part. It's nice that we have this. So I just give it a bit margin, breaking margin and prediction, uh, predict early and detect early. Uh, because there is a limitation in the perception. That's why simulation works nice. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for that, I have a video I had. So just uh, going to the last points that the uh, I, I would say this this is like a base. Uh, the open planner is a, a good base for any uh, for for us to start with the autonomous driving, uh, but we do need a better motion model uh, compared to what we have uh, as a default functionality. What so, do you mean uh, by motion model? Uh, the motion model, like the motion prediction model, like a map independent motion prediction model, which is the work which I would be doing mm -hmm. in my PhD. Yeah, yeah. Sure. And, uh, yeah. You, so you can is, add you can add your uh, your work, your yeah, research yeah. on top of that. Yeah, yeah. This is what I'm planning to do. <laughs> so, uh, okay. The, the last video which I wanted to show is the trajectory instability. Uh, it, the video is very short. Uh, I couldn't get the right angle for it, but maybe you could understand what uh, I'm trying to say with the instability in the back. So I think this is the perception lag. You sometimes skip detecting the object from the perception and that affects the trajectory uh, of the target vehicle. So you can see that the, the, the trajectories are not smooth. They they come and disappear uh, um, in the uh, Actually, there is one, one problem also for that. Uh, it's not only the it's not only visualization. Uh, you need to increase the distance, the detection distance for the the closest lane. Uh, this is one thing. Second, if you don't have um, the uh, heading of the vehicle, it's. Uh, yeah, if you are in intersection, it will detect everywhere. Uh, and if you're, the heading is wrong, it might detect like opposite direction. So this is, this is from the perception problem. I, I have some work around, but not in the public uh, uh, repository because it's a workaround. So everyone can add his own workaround. So you're saying that we should only uh, be looking at the trajectories of the vehicles ahead of us and not the ones which are on the opposite side? Uh, you can you can check the opposite side, but it's uh, it, it's going to be, you need to have a better tracking because uh, like the heading of the target vehicle uh, is important to, to extract the, the correct one, the correct trajectory, and also the distance to the distance to the closest lane how many how many center lines you want to detect with this vehicle so you want the closest one uh, because sometimes if you are driving within one meter from the center line it will detect it because you have margin of one meter but if you are uh, parking on the center on the road and the object detection detect the center of your the center of the point cloud uh, three meters from the center line 
then you will not be able to detect this one, although you are on this lane. But because the perception say that the center, the the center is 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 more is far from the from the actual vehicle center, then you have this error margin. Did I you get? Did you understand what? Um, I guess a bit. Mm, anyway, uh, it it it's kind of depends on the the center. In the simulation, you have you have exact center. Okay. Okay. In in when you have real data, when you have uh, uh, cluster data, the center is not in in the actual center of the target vehicle. And it changes. So okay. it might the center get out of the margin of detection to the, the like the, set, the center line. So it will disappear. And when it the center recalculated and it's closer to that center, it detected. That's why you will find this uh, problem. Okay. Okay. I, I also wanted to make a quick comment that we wanted to try out this Mahir's prediction functionality with a real car, uh, but uh, we, we didn't dare to, to enable it on the street because the, the predicted trajectories were so unstable. And I think it's the, some flaws in the perception and indeed the tracking is essential here. But maybe in the very beginning of the video when the car makes its turn, then you can see that it also predicts some uh, spurious uh, uh, here you can see on the yeah. uh, on the bottom here mm -hmm. you see some trajectories which uh, I guess this is just uh, some fake or uh, false objects which are not really objects. Yeah. Yes, uh, but it predicts trajectories for them, and these might cause the, our car to to stop in unexpe unexpected places. And actually, the, the video that we are seeing right now is relatively nice uh, compared to what we actually saw uh, mm. with the car. So we, we saw a lot of uh, those fake obstacles or uh, spurious obstacles. Mm, yeah, uh, and uh, this might be, it's not maybe so much the prediction problem that then our uh, like clustering uh, needs to be tuning tuned a little bit more or uh, basically perception module problem. Mm. Yeah, uh, as I said, it, it's uh, it's my problem too. So um, I try to do this on uh, first on on Carla and then uh, on the real vehicle. Uh, but still, Euclidean cluster has a lot of problems, um, <coughs> and the tracking to fix like to be able to fix the Euclidean cluster, you need a very good uh, tracker. Um, which we don't have now, so this is the this is one missing uh, uh, module. Uh, I don't know. I hope I can find uh, someone or like find a student who can work on this tracking issue and uh, perception. So this will be a nice uh, addition to the to AutoWare and OpenPlan. I think we are using this. IMM PDA tracker. Maybe Max can correct me. Yes, correct. We are using the AutoWare mm. uh, PDA uh, IMM tracker. But still has some issues. Like uh, I, I tested it. It has some some issues also. So mm -hmm. sometimes it keeps the objects. Sometimes it keeps the objects uh, for longer than we need them. Uh, and something we also do, we uh, fuse the, the speed from the radar. Uh, we, basically, we take the objects from the LiDAR, from the Euclidean clustering, and we attach them the speed from the radar. So mm. our speed estimates, at least in the forward direction, are pretty good or pretty accurate. Mm. Uh, but uh, I'm not so sure about the center point. Indeed, the center point might be unstable. Yeah, just uh, maybe you can visualize or uh, f have a function to calculate the 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 root mean square uh, error between the. Uh, but you don't have ground truth. Uh, you need ground truth so you can calculate the error. 
Uh, um, it's one more thing I would like to highlight is that the, the problem of, which you highlighted is that the trajectory here, the obstacle is here, but the trajectory is lagging behind the actual obstacle here as well. So if I understood Hatem correctly, this is just a visualization issue. He didn't want to uh, put too much uh, 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 like a pressure on the RVs, uh, so he mm -hmm. publishes those uh, predicted trajectories only with a in a certain interval. Mm -hmm. So I'm saying that this can be this could have been propagated to the trajectory evaluator node, uh, uh, the safety forecaster node as well. To exactly. make sure, okay, uh, let me to to make sure that you don't have lagging problem. Uh, this is the the first step of the of uh, clustering, uh, which has the, the these kind of clusters. Uh, also visualize the uh, the bounding box uh, and out the output of uh, also from the tracking from the um, the, the IMM track, tracker visualize them if okay. they match the cluster then there is no issue but if they if you have lagging between tracking lag between track and the cluster uh, then there is an issue in the in the synchronization either in the, in the uh, ROS bag or between the Collidian cluster and the track. Okay, I understood. Check, check this. Yep. Okay. Thank you. So Thank that's you very basically much. all from me. Thank you very much. Uh, Thank you. Okay, uh, this is a nice solution. If uh, we are waiting for, for for final merge, so we like uh, to one fifteen, so we can merge all these changes together. Uh, I just wanna update, uh, fast update. How are you, Max? Um, for the for the merging. Yes. Uh, um, can we have like a rough estimate? I'm not 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 like uh, in next week or like rough estimate mm. uh, maximum. Uh, the only thing I need is to just uh, spend some time to finish it because mm. uh, there is one package that needs merging uh, and um, there are some problematic uh, functions and uh, I wanted to ask you about it. So, uh, Okay, let's... Uh, you want now or um, Friday? Um, it depends. Uh, uh, everything's good for me. Uh, depends. Maybe it's uh, if not very interesting for the others or uh, okay so we we can if we have time at the end we can uh, yeah we can continue that's uh, okay. very good for me okay okay uh, thank you very much and, uh, uh, let's see. it's uh, mm. the package well um, the last package that needs to be merged is a way planner mm. and we already talked about it uh, uh, that uh, then I will only merge the package coming from AutoWare uh, re official repos for the web planner. But it seems that, uh, and I wanted to ask you about that, that they have added some functions into the planning helpers and that they are using these functions into the web planner. Uh, yeah, and I wanted to, uh, your opinion about how to deal with that. If it's, if it's additional, we can keep these functions in planning helpers and use them and uh, keep them used mm -hmm. in the way plan. Okay. Yeah, that's Just, uh, But add, I can add a tag to the functions. This is uh, uh, what, what, 115 or, uh, or 114. Just the release or the commit for mm -hmm. these functions to separate them from, okay. from, from our yes. uh, modification. Yes. So, but yeah, I will tell you exactly like which function, so I can also okay. have your feedback of is it really a function that was added by them or not? Or okay, 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 okay. We'll check one by one. Okay. Thank you. Uh, next point in our agenda today, uh, uh, Armin, you have a discussion. You wanted to yeah um, some of your results or uh... hello uh, again everyone uh, i just wanted to make a quick addition to the motion prediction um challenge uh the waymo uh 
team or ho however to say, um, they published the new motion data set. I think everybody uh, got this uh, at this point. And they also published a challenge regarding motion prediction. And uh, this could be a pr promising approach as well, at least for every team that has an uh, additional uh, GPU power left in the vehicle. So you mm. could uh, maybe integrate uh, one of the networks that will be published in this challenge uh, into your uh, into your vehicle for the issue of motion prediction. Can you send uh, the link to this uh, to the group? The yeah, I can. Uh, you have to log in with a Google account, but uh, yeah, just for everyone to know about it. Yeah, of course. Thank uh, you. Give me a second. That's the first part uh, that I wanted to add to the previous discussion. Um, and the second thing uh, is the uh, control of uh, indicator lights based on uh, either map information or the uh, Eagle vehicle um, uh, position and uh, global trajectory. And uh, yeah, I already wrote into Slack. I think uh, you have seen the message. And I per personally uh, have to integrate it into our research vehicle for our certification with the uh, local authority so we can drive on public roads. Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to ask uh, how everybody else is, uh, is doing it and uh, propose uh, uh, a small solution. But I would uh, just want to ask uh, how you all of you are doing it, uh, since uh, it might be uh, not necessary to uh, discuss the thoughts I uh, I had so far, since I have no implementation at this point. Okay. Um, that, does anyone uh, has a solution for the indicator using Open Plan, like uh, activating the the blinkers yes uh, i think we uh, we did some fixes to the open planner to enable the blinker functionality uh, the person who made those fixes are not uh, right now in this call but uh, if i remember it correctly the, then uh, most of of the functionality was already there uh, some of the blinker uh, status was not just propagated through all the layers. Uh, and uh, we have been planning to, to, to create a pull request for that. Mm. But uh, at the moment, we haven't got to that yet. Uh, but basically, we, we um, uh, assign to the lanes. Uh, lanes have this lane type, is mm. it a straight yeah. left or right, uh, which I guess was not initially meant for that, but actually, but we use it for blinkers. So we switch on blinkers based on those uh, lane types. Mm. Yeah, okay. uh, this is, this, I think this is the one suggestion I was talking about uh, using the map. So embed the, uh, the type, the left, right, uh, and forward with the, with the lanes and then use that are you already turning on the indicator lights uh, in like like a few meters before you get on this lane, or are you just turning it on as soon as you get onto the lane? Uh, we turn it on uh, a few meters before that lane. If I remember it correctly, this logic uh, is the same that is used for speed. So there is yeah, some okay. uh, look look ahead. Uh, distance that we look yeah. ahead for the speed changes and we use the same look ahead, look ahead distance to see if we should turn on the blinker and I'm, I'm not exactly too happy about it I think it turns on the blinker too early but that's how it is right now okay yeah, I, I personally um, wondered whether it's necessary to store the information in the map and uh, this uh, I came up with this um, discussion point in in our team since we are planning on using open using open drive maps uh, directly, and 
there uh, it's not intended to uh, store some additional types for the planner in the map uh, in the map file. And therefore, when importing the open drive map, you would have to uh, later on add the information to the road network, uh, which is Hartem's data structure for describing uh, the road, ne uh, road network that we are driving on. And uh, I personally uh, came up with the solution of just turning on an indicator, like uh, turning on the indicator light uh, based on whether or not the current lane has more than one uh, uh, predecessing lanes, like following lanes. And then you have to be in a junction uh, or then a junction has to follow. And uh, then whether, depending on whether you're going, uh, like whether your global path uh, is going straight or uh, doing a left or a right turn, then you can turn on the indicator lights depending on this. But uh, it's probably uh, also not the best since uh, you will still have to um, add additional contr control for lane changes and parking and, uh, all of those scenarios where you have to turn on the indicators. Hmm. Yeah, we, we are not exactly sure about our solution either, uh, but it has worked for us well enough for the use cases that are our main ODD okay. right now. So yeah, we will stick with it until it proves <laughs> that it doesn't work yeah. anymore. Okay. But what yeah. I, what yeah. I see, what I've Go seen ahead, is, uh, for example, the Tesla full self-driving beta, that uh, there are many videos on the internet, and you see that it sometimes in random places switches on the blinker. And I thought that, yeah. okay, that would, wouldn't happen to us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, the, the main problem with our solution is that you need to have this data on the map. Uh, if you want to generate like the blinker behavior based on other map features, then it might be interesting to do so, but it was just easier, I think, for us to put it on okay. the map so the data is here. And, uh, yeah, also, also the, I think the indicator lights aren't of uh, huge research interest. So uh, yeah, nobody Actually, really cares about the implementation too much at this point. Uh, I, I believe that this can, I believe uh -huh. that this can be done uh, based on the data uh, because when you, for example, one important source uh, that we use uh, to draw our HD maps is the trajectories of the car. So we drive around with a car and we record the trajectories and we make those trajectories as the center uh, lines of the lane. Uh, and uh, when we record those trajectories, we also could record the, uh, when the driver switches on the blinker and we could incorporate those, uh, this data into our HD map, uh, uh, like at least semi-automatically, uh, if, if not fully automatically. Uh, so uh, I, I believe that it's not maybe that much of a problem because it can be automated uh, based on the actual driving behavior. One problem you face, uh... Armin, that Open Drive doesn't have uh, existing context or artifact to describe this. You have to add it as a user data. Yeah. If you will edit yourself the Open Drive, you have to add it as a as a user data, which is the direction of uh, of, of the uh, of the lane um, of the, or road. Um, and sometimes, actually, Open Drive has a problem. Sometimes they they like they define different lanes with one road. Some, some if it's automated uh, process, it doesn't separate. When you branch, it doesn't separate. It continue uh, defining yeah. the same road, but different lane where they are go different ways for some time. And then they construct the, 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 a new road uh, for each uh, road branch. And then- Yeah, I noticed the that before, yeah. Mm. So, so this is this is a, a bit challenging with Open Drive. Um, if you use the data, if you 
um, I, I believe it will be mixed between both uh, map information and driving information. For example, if you are if you are changing lane, you wanna uh, also use the indicator to 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 change lane for left and right. Uh, so this is important to to know. Um, if you are, uh, for example, if you are not changing lane, if you are enabling uh, uh, swerving, and you are just uh, going around the vehicle parked on the on the road, then you need to also uh, switch the indicator on yeah. and then off after or the opposite way when you go to the center line. Um, so this is also, and sometimes it's objective. Uh, sorry, uh, sometimes it's like uh, subjective. So some people do it, some people don't. And if they are swerving a little bit, they don't. And some people do it when they are swerving a little bit. So will this be understand that any change or just a small swerve? It's a matter of uh, in between. But the basic ones, if you are in the intersection, uh, I guess by the map is the is the easiest way. Okay, so uh, then I will try to stick to the map based uh, indicator like control for the junctions, but uh, for swerving and lane changes, um, there there is no logic for indicators uh, implemented at this point. Um, just uh, um, maybe uh, we can we can discuss with uh, with Max. Uh, I think he he can he can help us with the, their implementation. Uh, and uh, maybe that will guide you in your implementation. We don't want to have double implementation because we're gonna yeah. merge both later to to the open planner. So we just need yeah. both uh, be, to be consistent. Okay. Good. So there will be an implementation uh, like coming from uh, Max and you at, at some point. Uh, the, the last. Max, can you can you point point us to the the main modification to the to enable the indicator? Um. I didn't do those modifications, but what happens uh, is that we just read this data from the map. Yes. Uh, and uh, we publish it along with the driving comments. Uh, okay, uh, uh, you publish from from which node? Mm. This is a the, good question. The, the, just like uh, that, I can have a look. So if you have some some, some time, please have a look and uh, uh just to, to be consistent maybe not the exact but to be consistent with the solution you have okay yes I, i'm i'm having a look okay right now so i'm looking at the graph so it might take a bit of time but uh, yeah i'm uh I'm... okay uh so this is the we will get some information from max armin uh yeah so any other so, issues? Yeah, just seeing that it's in the behavior selector that we publish that in the current behavior. Oh, okay. Then, then we have our own node that will read from this current behavior and publish uh, the message type we need uh, in our uh, control pipeline. So we have the behavior selector publishing the current behavior. Then we have our own node indicator publisher mm. comments that is then read by our by, uh, command pipeline and uh, drive uh, goes to the car. Yeah, I guess it's uh, it will be the same because uh, um, every every car or every every controller has different way to send this signal. So you will have a node to send the signal to the car or to the low level controller. Uh, but from open planner point of view, it's uh, from uh, behavior selector. Mm.
Yeah, uh, is it embedded in the in the current behavior or not? Um, I just want to check. Um, Uh, yeah, um, you will have indicator in the behavior state. So the message it published from from a behavior selector includes the indicator. So you will just need to uh, assign these values. And uh, yeah, I can understand now. I forget about this. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, yeah, maybe just if you can add it to the map or you can add your simple function to, to, to decide in the decision maker and then assign that to the uh, behavior message, behavior state uh, structure. Okay. Okay. Uh, that makes sense so far. And I think all of my uh, questions regarding the uh, indicators are, are clear at this point. And uh, as soon as we uh, come up with some corner cases where the current implementation fails, then I'll let you know. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, an another thing, uh, Hatem, did you already come up with a solution for the testing of uh, uh, Open Planner regarding the uh, move to uh, the new AutoWare version? Uh, not yet. I'm, I'm still waiting for the confirmation. Like as uh, Max was saying, uh, we will need to resolve the issues with the Way Planner. Uh, once we do that, we will. Uh, we will come up with a testing plan. Do you want to okay. be part of that or? Um, I can't promise anything at this point uh, since I'm still in my master's and I have to do a lot of lectures. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, during the summer, I will have some time. And also uh, my current uh, research topic is regarding the uh, setup of uh, uh, Dockerized uh, open planner, like uh, running it in a Docker container, and uh, therefore uh, enabling easy uh, uh, Git, uh, like updates from newest Git versions, and uh, also running tests um, in a simulation environment, like automatically. Mm -hmm. And uh, I presented the common road uh, benchmarking mm -hmm. tool, which I want to use for that. So this might be an option for. Uh, like it's not a unit testing level anymore. It's like, yeah, it's testing multiple units, like uh, the, the entire uh, mm -hmm. open plan as an as a unit um, within yeah. a vehicle. It's a scenario based testing. Uh, we are actually we are really interested in that. Uh, not also not only open planner, auto wear also. So if we can have a. a um, like a good process, we can get the process running. We can also uh, pro like propose this to uh, AutoWare Foundation. Okay, this would be uh, really interesting then, yeah. Mm. Okay, uh, once, we, once we are ready, we will include you in the loop uh, so you can, uh, we can work on this uh, testing plan. I will also let you know as soon as I'm ready with my setup. Okay, okay, great. Okay, uh, any other updates or question? Okay, uh, yeah, if there is no updates, we can 
uh, conclude uh, the meeting today. Um, that just only uh, maybe if uh, Max want to stay and uh, discuss the uh, the function functions, yep, we can we can continue doing that. Uh, and uh, yeah, uh, thank you very much, everyone. If you want to stay, you are welcome. If you want to leave now, we finish the uh, official meeting. Right. See you next. Uh, thank in you. Two weeks. Okay. Okay. See you. You. So uh, I've sent a link to um, to the chat here uh, with the those two functions I was talking about. Okay, uh, auto way our chat and yes. Mm. So it's those two functions: uh, construct road network from ROS message and. Construct, construct road network from ROS message v2. Uh, okay. Um, so I wanted to know if this is uh, something new or not. No, no. This is this is very important if you are using vector map, uh, ISEM vector map. Um, so. Okay, so uh, has it moved? I... Hmm? Has it moved? Because uh, in the uh, last version, in the develop uh, version, we don't have those functions. Ah, in the okay, mapping okay, sorry, I, I forget. Uh, I moved the map, the, the vector map parsing, the map parsing from from this file, from uh, mapping helpers. There, now there is separate files, one for KML, one for vector map, and one for uh, Lele2. Okay, so I will just write this down. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Um, okay, so this is the issue. Uh, I, I actually took uh, those mapping uh, only in mapping helper is the common function, which is generic. You can use it with any map. Okay. Uh, do you, where is, for, for those construct road network from Rust message, uh, in which file is it uh, located now? Uh, in so I can ah, okay. uh, maybe can include it or it now. Uh, uh, okay planner source uh, vector map loader okay you will find those messages actually there uh, so in op, op planner vector map loader Yes. Uh, actually, the names are changed from ROS message and, and version zero, not version two. Uh, that without version become version zero and the normal one become uh, ROS message. The reason is uh, actually it's uh, version zero is a very old version not used anymore. So. Okay. So, um, so there is, I see two. Construct road network from ROS message. So this became version zero, right? Uh, no. Um, oh, okay. Let me tell you exactly so you can um, construct from ROS message. Uh, that is, uh, that is, okay. Without version is, is become version zero. Okay. And V2 become without version because this is the main one used now. Okay, so the version zero is deprecated. A version zero, yes, is uh, deprecated. Okay. Okay, uh, with this I can continue because it seemed like it was the last uh, blocking point. Mm -hmm. I just need now to include this uh, vector map loader uh, into the... Uh, mm -hmm into this uh, this uh, and basically it will be done uh, it's the last package uh, to be merged and right now i think uh, like one task is a bit on standby like so maybe i, I will spend a bit more time today and uh, and uh, hopefully finish that mm -hmm. okay because it should be just a few hours actually i just missed those uh, <laughs> 
few hours of extra extra work. Don't, don't worry, don't worry. Uh, just when you have some time, just finish it and uh, let's uh, let's start doing the like build and the basic basic uh, test. Mm -hmm. uh, then we can once basic test like it, it the global planning working. Uh, uh, we can see trajectories and the car is moving and okay, let's make uh, uh, include Armin and make a testing plan. Okay, that's uh, perfect for me. And uh, then, uh, if you are interested, I could also try to uh, set up some uh, code standards, uh, some code checks, and this kind of stuff uh, in the repo. If you think it's a good idea. Uh, if you have time, okay, let's add it mm -hmm. to our agenda and let's discuss about yes. it. Yes, okay. Because uh, uh, yeah, it's something I'm really interested on, code quality and stuff like that. So so we can use the, there is the AutoWear AI code standard and AutoWear Auto code standard. Or do you yes. want to have a mix between both? Um, I was thinking about the uh, using the AutoWear AI code standard because it's part of auto AI, mm -hmm. so it would not stand out from the mm -hmm. other packages. Okay. Even though I prefer the auto auto code standard, but sometimes you don't choose that standard. <laughs> I, uh, 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 I actually um, like th this. This project is not uh, the objectives are different than uh, auto auto. So mm -hmm. that's why a standard will, uh, as you see, most of the, of the people working on this are researchers and they are making demos and it will, it will slow us down a lot if we try to follow outward auto standards. Yes. So as, as if a matter of efficiency and uh, like speed, which is the, actually a big thing of our team is the speed. We can take decision faster and we can do things uh, much faster than Autoware Foundation mm -hmm. uh, or yes. Autoware Auto because the objective is different. So I'm not saying that we are better or 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 or, uh, or they are better. It's the, the just different different methodology for different objectives. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yeah, I, yeah, I totally agree with that. Mm. But, okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's going forward well. Uh, it's. Uh, now that those, uh, I think those uh, meetings are really kickstarting uh, the development. I think it's really cool. Thank you for organizing yeah. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy actually for, for everyone, uh, you and uh, everyone from uh, University of Tartu and uh, everyone like willing to spend time uh, on that. Yes. Uh, so hopefully by merging all the, the, the changes, will have a much better uh, planner that you can plug it and plug it to the, your car or robot and it just with some few parameter uh, tuning it will work out of the box mm -hmm. yes would be amazing <laughs> mm -hmm. Great, right. thank you thanks a lot for your time thank and you. uh, i will keep you in touch uh, i will start to uh, i will spend a bit of time on this okay okay once you, once you you finish, just tell me we'll have a meeting uh, Friday or next week anytime. Okay, perfect. Okay, great. Thanks. Thank you very much. Bye. Bye bye. bye, -bye.